You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call. Today, I'm going to go over the gear that I carry into the backcountry in my backpack. It's not all my gear, but it's probably 80% of it, and it is what we are uh, giving away in the Gritty Stole Christmas giveaway. Now, some of you are getting entered to win this package. Some of you are not. You'll want to listen to this podcast either way, though. We're always adding new gear to our backpack setup, our backcountry setup, our thriving in the backcountry kind of rig kit. Uh, It's always ever-changing. There's some old stuff, but there's some new stuff. And it's nice to do these gear discussions, these kind of loadout uh, gear dumps, backpack dumps once every three to four months because things evolve over time. Uh, I'm going to go as quick as I can through this because I know a lot of my audience has already heard about why I use certain pieces of equipment. And uh, I'm going to try to be as swift as possible getting through it. Now, uh, if you want to be entered to win this this whole, uh, all the gear I'm about to go over, all you got to do is go shop at Peaks Equipment, great partner of ours, Get a pair of gaiters, trekking pole, or the teepee, even a spoon or a hat. If you just want to be entered to win, every $10 gets you an entry. And we're going to pick that winner on December 17th. Well, actually, the the giveaway ends on December 17th. So between now and the 17th is your opportunity to uh, shop over there and get entered. And then we're going to pick the winner um, the 18th or 19th, something like that, after the giveaway is over, as per usual. But this is put on by Peaks. We appreciate them. Want to thank Peaks Equipment for doing this. Bryce called me. He's the owner of Peaks. Said, hey, I want to give away your your gear list, your gear kit to some lucky person. Get them fully outfitted with all the gear you recommend and that you like to use. And I'm going to give that away just before Christmas. So here we are. All right. First on the list is this uh, Initial Ascent Backpack. It's got the, uh, it's, this is the 8K, which myself and Ryan Lampers were pretty instrumental in designing. We really wanted a pack that could handle the 10, 12 day trips we go on, be able to carry all our gear, but also at the end of a hunt, load up a, a deer uh, or a bear and pack the whole thing out along with what we have remaining in our back, in our uh, kit. And this was it. It, a lot of the backpacks don't have enough space. 8K is just right. But then when you have 8K, you have a little excess room. So we want to make sure that we had a pack that could suck down and be smaller and act like a 6K or a 5K pack. When I say 5K, 6K, 8K, I'm referring I'm referring to cubic inches generally. That's kind of the way that they, they do it. So it's 8,000 cubic inches roughly. Um, this carbon fiber frame. I've talked about it before. If you go and look at some of our other podcasts, you'll get more details on this. But basically, this frame is uh, nice and stiff, and it's built to handle, uh, to carry the load for you, a big heavy load. Um, It's kind of like having an external frame, but it's not. And um, I've talked about it before. I like the frame because we carry heavy, and um, it. It just has the the rigidity to to handle a heavy load more than most other packs, almost all of them. Um, it is a little stiffer when the load is lighter, but you get used to that over time, and you can kind of shift how you carry the load over time to to uh, make it a more comfortable ride. It's just sort of a learning curve. But what I love about it is to have the frame. This is uh, the meat shelf. This is the frame kind of stripped away from the main bag. This thing is just money. And I can use this to put my meat against the frame here. And I can strap it up back onto the the uh, frame. This spreads out. You have a little pocket here. I'm not going to go into the full details. You can go to Initial Ascent and check that out. But basically... I love this setup. I can put meat heavy quarters right back here. I can get them lifted up where I want them. It's a great design. So that's the Initial Ascent Pack, 8K Pack. Go check out Initial Ascent. Uh, Use the code GRITTY over there and you can get a discount on your purchase. And uh, 
if you decide to get one. And um, they have some more video and content over there so you can learn more about the pack. I've done some podcasts about it, explaining. You can look Google some of that stuff, look for it uh, in our library of content. But yeah, I can't recommend it enough. So that's the 8K pack, okay? And uh, <clears throat> this, I think the the it's valued at, you know... 800 bucks or something by the time you get all the bells and whistles, which is pretty on par with most of the expedition style backpacks on the market right now. Um, backpacks are hard to make. There's tons of little like sewing that needs, it's very manual process. When you look at this pack and you see how much uh, sewing takes place, little intricate pieces, it's very manual labor intense. And, uh, so backpacks are not something that you just like throw together on, on a, like a widget that you pump out. And so they tend to be a little on the higher side. They don't have good profit margins. Uh, I've worked with a lot of backpack companies over the years and, um, that's, that's how it goes. But, uh, so unfortunately, uh, they're, uh, they can be a very high price point item across the board, but. I think that this is the one that is the best for what we do, which is this heavy backpacking uh, trips, multiple days, 10, 12 day. I haven't found anything that carries heavy weight better. It's a dream. When I was in Alaska, Brady Miller had was there with me from Go Hunt. He was running a different pack and he had to carry out his, as an example, he had to carry out his antlers on his moose and the antlers were somewhere around 60 something inches, 62 or whatever it is, super heavy, thick, massive moose. And uh, going through the Alaskan bush, which was thick over our head, tall brush, nasty. And those horns sticking out, you know, like the wingspan of a big giant condor. It's a problem trying to go through the brush. So we had to turn the horns so they were vertical instead of horizontal. Well, they just wouldn't carry on his pack. It's too squishy, too soft. But you cinch it down on the initial ascent frame, popped right on there. Brady used my pack and he ha he packed his horns out. That's the advantage of having a stiff frame like that. It just is versatile. It's amazing how good it feels when you have heavy loads. It's a dream. And uh, that's really when the pack counts is when you got those monster loads to carry. And so saves your back, saves your body. Love that design. So moving on, uh, let's get into what else is in there. We got the Steri pin. This is the ultralight Steri pin. This is in the, uh, this is my favorite setup. And then uh, we got this water bladder here and hydro pack. It's, it comes in the uh, giveaway and uh, the Steri pin word on the Steri pin. They make all sorts of versions. We like this when it's rechargeable. Um, you just recharge it right here with this little port charges up and then all you got to do uh, is dip it in your water. And we typically use this water bottle here, which is also in the giveaway. This is a GSI Microlite. Pop the lid off, put the water in there, and you just stick your pen in there and a UV light comes on and it sterilizes the water, kills all the bacteria, germs, and all that kind of stuff, or neutralizes it. And then boom, you can drink it. Uh, we've been using these for years. They're lightweight, they're rechargeable. Um, they have ones that are not rechargeable. They have some that have replaceable batteries. We steer clear of those. We stick with these. I love this little UV sterilizer. Now there are issues, quality control issues that seem to be constant in the last few years with micro, with, uh, with the, uh, SteriPen brand. It's like hit and miss. Everyone has a horror story. I think of these, including myself. At this point, I've been buying two or three, and then I use them, figure out which one works and which one's broken, and then I send it back in, the ones that are broken. It's that bad. So, uh, but I've had a good a set of good luck with this particular one, and the Classic it really has never failed anyone, but it's big, bulky, and has replaceable batteries. Don't want it. This one's nice, but it is a process of getting one that works. It's just been, I've had this one, you can see it's all worn off. Um, I've had this one for four or five years, never has failed me, works great. Some of the issues, uh, it gets cold. Some of them get cold and when they get cold, they don't want to work. 
This one doesn't act that way. And uh, I'll throw it in my pocket and keep it warm anyway sometimes when I when, if it is. But the other thing too is I find that if I bang it a little bit on the side of the jar, it's like a fluorescent light, right? This UV bulb that's in here. And so sometimes it's like the gases need a little, little, uh, little, little, little shaken up and then it'll light the tube. And then once you get it going, it'll start working for you pretty, pretty, uh, efficiently. So that happens usually when it's cold. That's, that's when it has fits. But like I said, uh, when you get a good one, you've got a good one. This is a good one. Um, right here, this is, a uh, little stuff sack full of my fire starter and the fire starter we're using is s bit you get some of that in your uh in the giveaway kit i've been loving this 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 fire starter it's esbit i believe esbit it's not very expensive you can get it at uh, amazon or something like that but uh great fire starter i've talked about that in a wood stove burning podcast we did not too long ago you can go back and check that out we go into detail on how to start a fire how to get it going in your teepee in your wood stove in your shelter um a lot of nuances to starting a fire and a lot of guys don't understand how how wood stoves actually work they just and so they're losing a lot of heat they're not getting fire started well they uh don't maximize the power of the stove they get it it smokes in their teepee all kinds of problems so we did a podcast about it and uh go check it out if you want more info there uh, Bic lighters. We throw in a bunch of different ones. I do like the clear see-through ones because I can see how much of the fuel is left, but we always carry a bunch of lighters. They too work better when they're warm. So a lot of times they go into a pocket and uh, they come out and they are good to go. When they're cold, sometimes you got to strike, 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 strike. It's not even worth it. Just get it warm. Um, but I actually love this. This is a pyro putty. Um, I forget what they're called. It's a pyro putty lighter, but it doesn't run on gas. It runs on electricity and it's a plasma lighter. That's what it is. And you can see it, it does this little lighting right here. Well, it, it bucks the wind in a heavy wind. That little sucker just keeps on going. It also uh, gives me a light, something that'll light a fire that is not gas and it's not, it's impervious to the cold. And so I have had times where my lighters and whatnot wouldn't want, don't want to start or you run out of gas in your lighter and you're like, oh man, and I carry waterproof matches as well, but I really never had to dip into the waterproof matches because I always have this and this is rechargeable. It's got a little port right there and we have solar panels that we use and we have battery packs that we use. So we always seem to have electricity and in the supply nowadays. That's how drastically backcountry hunting has changed in the last five years, even. So we can always recharge this. So I can use this up and then I can plug it in and solar energy and charge it up back up and I'm back in business. And uh, it's just nice comfort. It's nice to have. And you, uh, if you grab one of these fire starter blocks, pull it out and you get this little sucker right up next to it. It'll light this fire starter right up and then you're back in business for uh, getting your fire started. So I like carrying that just for, just for, as another backup. So waterproof matches, uh, gas lighters, and the plasma lighter, kind of the kit plus various forms of fire starter. S bit, bit and trioxane tablets are very good for like deep emergencies. Those suckers will burn underwater. Once they start, they don't stop uh, and you can get, you can get trioxane tablets as well. I carry some of those too. So that's the fire starter situation. I got a Peaks headlamp right here, the Backcountry Duo. Uh, love this headlamp. It's um, rechargeable. It's got a white light. It's got a uh, red light. It's got a lock that turns it on and off. So uh, now it comes on and I can go through different levels of brightness with it. I can go to red different levels go back to white and cycle through but then i can the green light tells me how much battery it's fully charged i can turn this off and then i can uh hold this button down like this and i can lock it gives a little flash now when i push the button it won't accidentally turn on which is a major issue when you're backpacking the last thing you want is for this to get turned on while you're on a 10 mile hike. And when you get to your destination, it's dead as a doornail. 
you want to keep that power. So that locking thing feature is critical. And then when we do run this light, the it's a high powered beam, super bright, and it burns for hours. It's a very long lasting uh, battery, but it is also rechargeable. So you, with a fast port charger, so you can throw it on there and charge it up real quick and you're back in business right off your dark energy battery pack or or your uh, solar panel. So again, we don't really run batteries anymore in the backcountry. Almost everything, I think everything we have is basically rechargeable, um, 100%. So we always have, we're all, we always manage to eke out enough with a couple battery packs and uh, a solar panel, enough electricity to live indefinitely in the backcountry. So next on the list, I've got, uh, this is a little pouch for my top lid. I got a spoon in here. This is coming with the kit. It's just a Peaks uh, titanium spoon that's in there. I always bring two spoons because nothing makes me more angry than when I've misplaced a spoon and I need one at this moment because my meal is ready to eat. I've got a lot of these homemade meals over here. These are, this is Pad Thai using Mark Livesey from Treeline Academy, his Pad Thai recipe. My daughter, Caitlin, made me 30 of these the other day freeze dried them all in our harvest right freeze dryer. When I dump hot water in there, rehydrates my pad thai. And some reason I let my, I set my spoon down around my sleeping bag or whatever, and I can't find it. I know I'll find it tomorrow or the next day, but for now I'm ready to eat. I just dig out my second spoon and you will be shocked. It doesn't weigh anything, but you'll be shocked how many dudes forget their spoon, lose their spoon, and you are their savior. You could even like make a trade. You give me that freeze-dried ice cream sandwich and you can have this spoon for the week. See, thinking ahead. So always good to bring two spoons. It's no, it's just so nice. Just bring two. And then um, I got a few other things in there, but just top lid stuff. Here's my top lid. This right here goes on the top of my initial ascent pack. I, pr I try to put everything that I might need in the evening in this and little incidentals and everything else. So that when I go into my pack, at my teepee at night, I just pull the lid off. I ditch my pack at the foot of my sleeping bag. And I know I've got my spoon in here. I got my fire starter. I got my like mini little gloves in here. I've got, I've got what I need to go to the bathroom, my little toiletries kit. I got, you know, like you name it. I, those little incidentals and the stuff that you need at night, brushing my teeth, vitamins, things like that. It's kind of all right here. So I can just pop it off and I got it. Got it ready for camp. So uh, that would be the things I just went over. My spoon, my SteriPen, my headlamp, my uh, fire starter, all of that kind of goes right in there. Along with that would go my goat knife. I'll wear this around my neck. This is in the in the giveaway as well. This one's the carbon uh, tur or something like that. I'm not good with names, but uh, this goat knife hanging around your neck. It's got a nice nitro steel, holds an edge, easy to sharpen too at the same time. Um, love that knife. That uh, I take with me. And then this is a uh, this is the the basically my scalpel knife. A little dirty from Kodiak, but this little knife I use for skinning uh, has replaceable blades. Uh, I do like having that style knife for some of the intricate skinning. I like the long handle here to get in there around the eyes when I'm in the mouth and the lips, when I'm caping something out. Uh, it's just nice. And I like that it's orange because when you're skinning an animal, like a moose, there it's like you set it down, it disappears in folds of flesh and, <laughs> and fur and mud and you're screwed. So genius to have it painted orange. It's easy to spot and to find. Um, and that's one of those knives that, you know, you're using specifically for skinning and then you set it down constantly as you work a knee or a joint or something, a hide, and then you're like, where did it go? Uh, it's easy to spot. Uh, beanie, there's a Peaks beanie. This is a wool beanie. Peaks makes it. If you want to be entered to win the giveaway, all you got to do is buy as much as just a wool beanie. And you're entered. It's uh, every ten dollars gets you entered to win, and you might be the lucky person to get all this gear, uh, brand new gear. 
So uh, beanie, I throw my beanies in. I usually bring two. I always bring two pretty much just in case you lose one because when you're bald like me, that sucks. And then I've got right here, Catula Micro Spikes. These are in the giveaway. They are a must. Everyone should own these. They're the best on the market. There's nobody else that's making them this good. These are spikes that uh, go over your boot and uh, they add so much traction capability. They're not very heavy. When you have a heavy load, man, it's the difference between being injured, hurt, slipping off a ledge, slipping down a mudslide, you name it. They are just nice. We were in Kodiak. Um, there were a couple of times where we didn't bring them when we should have. And the person who had them on them, in, in the case of Brad versus Adam Weatherby, who didn't have them, whew, it was nasty. Adam almost went off a cliff. Brad, Brad didn't have him on one day and he slid 40 feet down a steep like this. And I was like, he's going to stop when he gets to the alders. And uh, pretty much what happened, it was a long slide down. So uh, Catula Microspikes, great brand, great, great uh, product. Man, if it's muddy, wet at all, snowy, it's in between snow and sleet, a Kodiak, any kind of Alaskan hunt, spring bear. This is it. This is money. Get those. Um, some of the cheaper ones, they can't pick up ice. Like, and pretty soon you're on a block of ice this thick. I don't know what it is about the micro spikes by Catula, but they don't pick up as much. So you got that 29 to 32 degree range. And it's like those cheaper brands or the other brands, they just build up these ice blocks. They just collect this ice and then it's ice on ice on ice. And then you're, it's even, it, you're not doing, you might as well not wear them, basically. Okay, in the kit is a uh, saw, but not this saw. This is the uh, Silky Big Boy. And uh, for Alaska, some spots, Kodiak, this is the money saw. Just bring it. It's not very heavy. It'll save your life. It's just a, it's a, it's night and day awesome. Um, whenever I don't bring it, I'm pissed off. Now, for other hunts where we're just doing wood for like a wood stove, kind of like this one in, inside my trailer or the teepees, uh, and in this kit is the Pocket Boy. We're selling, we're giving away the Pocket Boy. And that just goes right in here. It's this, but a mini version. Wicked teeth like this. The curved blade, the same thing. It's just a great saw. We never, we never go in the backcountry without a saw today. Uh, you can build you can build forts with it. You build uh, shelters, cut wood for stoves, make a blind, uh, get yourself out of, uh, cut a trail. Like, yeah, it's just, it's just indispensable. Got to bring the saw. All right. Uh, Therma rest, uh, air pad. Um, I love this air pad. This one. Well, I pretty much all the air pads are, are pretty sweet. Um, nowadays but i like the thermo rest because the strength the weight to uh warmth ratio i get cold at night this is the warmest they make the warmest stuff as far as i've been able to tell some say there is warm and then i freeze i don't feel any cold air through the 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 the, the x-therm and and those types of uh thermo rest when it's when it's a little bit colder or warmer temperatures i'll run this one which is not the x-therm not the high insulated one but like the a middle grade one they're great. Uh, they're durable. They, uh, but like any air pad, they have a shelf life. They wear out after probably I'd say 90 days of use or so in the field, they start to have issues around the valves and it's pretty much universal. I think a lot of folks never spend that many days out in the field like we do. And so they don't, they don't realize the fail point on these. Um, and once, once they start falling apart, they seem to just start falling apart. I have had, y'all know who follow this channel. I have had my run-ins with air pads. I feel like the Thermarest uh, is is the the uh, probably one of the better ones out there um, for again performance to weight. And they've been around a long time. Now, in discussion of the Therma Thermarest pad, I gotta say um, this tiny pump, two X by Flextail. Um, this thing is money 
indispensable. We pretty much don't, I don't leave camp without it anymore, ever, never, ever. It's just not a thing I do. This little puppy is legit. Um, and when you use the code gritty, no, when you use the link, we have a link in the description field of the video, um, pick it up there. That helps us out. I'm telling you, you want it. It's like 30 bucks. Is that right, Brad? Uh, yeah. It's like $30. Okay. And, uh, the thing about this, it, it blows up your air pad. You, you literally, uh, just, just put it on. There's knee, uh, thermal rest makes their own, but it's not like this. They have different different valves for different air pads. Pretty much, they make a, a valve that goes on every one. It comes with it. This is how the thermos rest one works. You put it on there like that. You double click this, and it starts blowing up your pad. Okay, but it's it's also a light, and this is where it really shines too. Is you can, oops, you hold this down, and you get a light. And you can change the brightness of the light. So you can hang it up like so. And in a teepee, okay, it's quite nice to have. It's really bright. And you can make it brighter, different levels of brightness just by selecting that. And then hold it down and, uh, or actually you just cycle it off, okay? So it's really, really handy. And you'd think, well, you know, you got a light and you got a, you got a blower for your air pad. That's cool. But, and, and this is so much better than the normal blower that you get from like Thermarest. But for fire starting, it's, you cannot go without it. it. It's become such a useful tool when you're running stoves like this. So for example, this is a little wood stove inside my little uh, cargo trailer here. I can get a fire just going raging hot. I just start blowing it in here like this and it will just kick up a fire so fast, especially if I threw in some fresh wood and I just put that on there within minutes of just raging flames. If I want to jumpstart my, my seek outside or my light outdoors wood stove, just put this right there. It shaves, let's say it takes 20, 30 minutes for you to get your tent heated up and get your stove really raging you throw this puppy on there your stove will be hot in five minutes like you say you get a little uh, fire starter going in there and you just barely get it started take this stick it on there it turbocharges your stove so the versatility of it is just it's too useful between the the you know speeding up your fire process your wood stoves using it for uh for the light it provides as well as airing up your mattress. And it keeps mold out of your air. Does it? Oh yeah. Cause you're, yeah, it keeps, okay. Like Brad said, it keeps mold out of your air pad because it's blowing in cool, fresh air instead of air, wet air from your mouth and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it's legit. Love this thing. So it goes in my bag. I bring it with me on everything. It's so cheap. There's a little hack for you. Love this thing. Go get one. Use the code. Uh, use the link we have provided. Next on the list, we have, here's some Sheep Feet Orthotics. Been using these forever. They are, uh, they're custom orthotics. Pretty high price point item, but well worth it. And we basically take those orthotics and we put them inside. I think we're giving away a pair of Laponia uh, boots. That's what's in the kit that that is... The Gritty Stole Christmas giveaway right now with Peaks. These are the Brickstall um, crispy boots, but the Laponia is, uh, or what we're actually doing in this giveaway, which is the boot I wear 90% of the time. I'll wear the Brickstall when it gets super swampy and wet and cold. They're warmer than the than the Laponia, but it has to be it has to be late November in Alaska uh, or November in. Uh, Idaho for me to ditch the, to ditch the Laponia. Love that boot. The orthotics are legit. Again, you know, boots are running like three, 400 bucks nowadays. I think the orthotics are somewhere around 300, 350. So great deal. Um, now I can't recommend crispy enough. I like the Laponia. I like the new Brickstall that's insulated. I forget what they call Brickstall Mountain GTX. Love that boot. And I love the 
Crispy, uh, Wild Rock. Those are the three boots that I rotate through. Pretty much right now, that's been my go-to all the time. All of them, I run the Sheep Feet Orthotic. And I I go up at least one full size when I am running, um, when I because I run these orthotics, at least a full size. Um, sometimes one and a half sizes. And I like the one layer of foam in the orthotic. I don't like the two layer, super spongy, soft. I, that to me, it's too hot. Uh, there's other issues I have with it. I like the single layer. That's what I recommend. That said, everybody's feet are so different and everybody's so finicky. Um, I'm surprised when a guy comes to me and says, this is the boot and this is the orthotic and this is everything's a little different socks as well. We all have our preferences there. I've had these dis- this discussion with Brad a few times as well. So you got to kind of figure yourself out. But on the whole, the feedback has been that Laponia 2.0, for example, is an incredible boot. Nobody I know that has got the orthotic, the sheep feet orthotic has has regretted it and uh, can't recommend that enough. So that's the boot setup, orthotic setup. Uh, let's get into the boot dryers. These are made by Graxaw. These are in the Gritty Stole Christmas giveaway as well. And what you've got is this Graxaw boot dryer. Okay. This boot dryer I have gifted and given away and shared with people. It is... If you're not, if you don't own this, you're making a mistake and you're a backcountry hunter and you're a late season hunter, you got to have this. E- even if you're traveling, um, nobody wants to fly with like a Pete's boot dryer and you don't have uh, a wall to plug it into, or you got to bring some propane tank for the, which propane doesn't dry things out very easily. It's not the best source for heat. It's a wet heat. This is it. You, you plop these suckers inside a pair of boots like that. Plug them into your battery pack. It sips electricity. Doesn't use much. Sucks air into your boots. If it's a hot sunny day outside, even if it's mid-November, and you put them in the sun, you'll get them drying in the sun. That'll do it. But also, if you just put them in the peak of your teepee or you're just inside your teepee, the hot air in the teepee will dry out your boots. No, No problem. Guys that have sweaty feet like me, Day two, day four, day five, adrenaline, excitement, hiking. I sweat a lot. My boots soak up moisture, moisture, moisture every day. If I don't have a pair of boot dryers, this isn't about my boots going underwater and getting wet or water leaking in, although that does happen. This is about dealing with built up moisture day after day from sweaty, nasty feet, which are what I have. My feet are nasty, but they are sweaty. And uh, so I... I, I love these things. So every two days or three days I'll, or every day, I'll throw these in there. The other thing too is when you do get in a lake or a river or you do go under and or water wicks into your boot, sometimes on those backcountry hunts, people are, dudes are screwed. Gals as well, like you're screwed. So pack these, put them in your boots, problem solved. I turned these on to a friend of mine in Alaska. I think it was Chris Tobias maybe. He just started walking through the rivers, just leaving his boots on because he knew that night he'd dry them out in the stove with the boot dryers. It's like, ah, I'm in a hurry. I'm just going to wear wet boots. We only got another hour to hike, whatever, right through the ri- river and then dries them out that night and he's good to go the next day. You have a totally different attitude about getting wet boots when you pack a pair of these around. It's like peace of mind. Finally, the last thing is, let's say it's, negative five degrees your boots were in the snow the day before they got moisture the tongue gets a little bit wet you're walking around in them you go to bed that night stove goes out in the middle of the night teepee and wood stove boots are sitting there they freeze solid as an ice block the leather freezes the tongue for everything freezes the whole boot is a block of ice and it's shaped to your foot and you're trying to get your foot in we've all done that and you can't get your foot in and it's miserable and it's so cold and your feet are frozen before you even leave the tent. And then because it's 10 degrees outside the whole morning, you're trying to get warm. You're trying to get your feet warm and they just don't want to warm up because they started out ice cold because you put them inside an ice cold chamber. With these, that's a that's that's misery from the past. 
These sit here at night. I warm them up, dry them out a little bit while the while the teepee and the wood stove are cranking in my in my shelter. In the morning, we start with a wood fire. We get everything dried out in the morning. We get warm. We have breakfast before the sun comes up. These come back on. These little suckers are churning. My boot, inside and out, becomes dry, becomes supple, and and like like I'm putting them on at my house. Throw this boot on. Good to go. My feet are warm on the outset. I'm not fighting to keep my feet warm throughout the morning and the afternoon. I just, I cannot recommend these Graxaw boot dryers enough. Use the code GRITTY over there and get yourself a pair. Um, I, I prefer you go direct, but you can sometimes find them at like a go hunt. Use the code over there. But Austin's a great guy and uh, love supporting him. He's the inventor. I brought this up years ago. He came up with a solution. He's only been improving it ever since. But these these things are uh, hard to explain how how um, magical they are. I when I was in Alaska this last time, Brady Ryan and I we ran into quite a few dudes out there who uh, were miserable, didn't know about these. So tell your buddies if they don't know about these and you have found the magic of them, dude, go tell your buddies, let them know uh, they're worth every penny. Every backcountry hunt back country hunter needs a pair of these even if you're hunting out of a trailer like this it's just so nice to have it's hard to get leather boots dry on the inside but when you use it sheep feet orthotics as well you can pull out the insole let it dry out throw the boot dryer in it dries even better okay so that's the boot dryer binos are in this giveaway we have the bx4 by leupold so is the bino harness you get uh the range finder this is the uh Full draw five rangefinder. Super sick little setup. You got the binos, you got the rangefinder, you got the bino harness all in this kit. Okay. Dark energy. We have a dark energy solar panel. Packs up like this. Super lightweight. It rolls out. Um Spectre. And uh roll that sucker out. Take your dark energy battery pack plug that sucker in and you have yourself um, a nice solar panel for backcountry cool little setup it's nice how it folds up like this um it can get it a little bit smaller too but you can roll that thing up you can keep the tube if you want or just slide that thing into your pack but these little roll up solar panels are pretty cool now we use the three fold ones as well we're kind of testing each one to see how, how they perform, but the, the convenience of that design is pretty sweet. This is the Dark Energy Poseidon. This uh, battery pack we've been using for years. It's just durable. It can handle the cold like nobody's business. They last, and they last for years. I've had other chargers. They might start out okay. They stop working right. I've never had one of these like fail me in the backcountry or at all. They're just... They're just impressive. They're durable. You can drive over this with your truck. You can drop it in a in a lake, and as long as the cover is closed, it withstands the de the 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 uh, water. Yeah, it's just a nice. It's just a. It's it's kind of bulletproof. We have found some lately that are a little bit lighter, but not quite on the same level of performance. So we're trying to figure out, uh, um, test those a little further, but. Look for a future podcast on that as we go head to head with a few different battery packs. But um, anyway, that's in this giveaway. You get a dark energy Poseidon and you get the Spectre uh, solar panel. And then uh, right here, we have the Stealthy Hunter uh, emergency kit. You can pick those up at Stealthy Hunter. Use the code GRITTY over there. It's got tourniquet. It's got all the stuff you need for backcountry safety. Pick that up at Stealthy Hunter. And while you're there, what's also in this kit, but I don't have here right now, is the Stealthy Hunter, Hunter rifle cover. Uh, scope and crown cover. It covers your rifle, your 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 action, covers your uh, scope, all that stuff. It's got foam to protect it. It's got a muzzle cover, so it keeps dirt from getting into your rifle. It's got a little handle. We love that thing. You've seen it. It's a legit product. Everyone should have one for backcountry hunting. And then uh, Stealthy Hunter glassing pad. This one uh, has been used for quite a while. It's a little beat up, used up, still going strong. Love the glassing pad. 
Never thought I would until I got it. It acts like a table in my tent, like at dinner time as I'm cooking my food. It's something I sit on outside to to handle the cold. We use it to fan the flames, although I'm using the uh, the, the flex tail pump a lot more nowadays than this. But um, it just has a lot of uses, a lot of uses. And then it can be folded like this and could go under the butt of your rifle. And you can use that to as a backrest for the rifle as your as the front is on the tripod. You can put your hand in between, use it just kind of as a, as a as as a stabilizing point. We use it all the time for shooting animals, like put it under there. It's just versatile. Never thought that I would find so many uses out of it. Now there are other ones out there. They're not thick enough. They don't insulate enough. You freeze your butt off through it. You can feel the cold, or they just don't go on your pack in between your straps the way you like to. It's just, this is the one. That's the one. Stealthy Hunter got it right. And then we have uh, some Stealthy Hunter. I don't know if these are in the giveaway. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm going to plug them anyway because you can pick those up at Stealthy Hunter. These are, uh, they're stuff sacks. They're super nice. Um, really well built. Last forever. They got a little sponginess to them. So they stretch. Lightweight. Keep yourself organized. Stoves, cook stoves. This is the uh, Minimo, Depoil Minimo. I've tried a lot of other stoves. I keep going back to this one. Uh, I like the shallow depth of it. Um, it's easier to cook in if I want to cook some fish or deep fry some bear meat or something like that. It's shorter. It's not tall and skinny where I'm like trying to get to the bottom. This stove has a micro valve. I've talked about it before where you can fine tune the the just a tiny bit of heat or you can crank it up to super hot that's indispensable like if you're going to boil bear meat in the mountains or w like what we did we boiled uh we took moose fat brady and i because we hadn't eaten in two days we chuck cut chunks of moose fat off rendered it down into fry oil threw the moose in there and deep fried the moose meat and had uh moose heart moose moose tenderloin and it was delicious. And uh, that's hard to do if you have something like your standard jet boil, because it's either on or off. That flame is either like a torch or it's down. It's kind of meant to just boil water as fast as it can. And then you turn it off. I want something I can actually cook with. I actually can simmer with, get a little pot of, you know, hot cocoa going and barely turn it on just enough to warm it up how I want. Get it so it's not boiling, but just just warm. Like you have control over it with this stove right here. So very nice stove that comes in the kit. And uh, um, gritty stole Christmas giveaway. Of course, this is fuel. Any fuel will do. Uh, that's meant for those stoves. And then uh, here we did a little podcast about this yesterday. This is the Tricer tripod. Um, bingo got this uh this head right here um that your binoculars can mount to that goes in here but binos i don't have them here with me but uh they'll slip right in there you can glass with your binos or you just got the little head here we did a little podcast about it if you haven't seen it it's well worth your time to go and look at it this is our favorite tripod for for hunting um not necessarily filming although we're working on collaborating to help build something that is more conducive to filming but for tripod for for spotting scopes for lighter camera rigs than what we carry for uh binoculars and glassing this is this is money it's crazy lightweight this whole setup is just shy i think of two pounds right at two pounds um it's tall tall enough uh, and the performance of the head, having used a bunch of others, Brad and Lampers are thrilled with its performance. Uh, so sweet, sweet tripod setup for two pounds. The performance is unbelievable. Probably the best we've ever used. And, uh, yeah, Tricer is a great company, great dude. So use the code gritty. If you're going to get one of these over there, use the link. If we have an, a link below, you can check that out. Um, either one works. Get yourself a little deal on it and get yourself one if you're interested. 
I think um, the value is incredible. Okay, this is the wood stove. We're giving away an 18 inch light outdoors wood stove. This is a 12, so 18 inch, something like that. This wood stove uh, is Brad's new favorite. He prefers it over the seek outside. We haven't gone head to head just yet. He is swearing by it all the time. I'm not sure he's right. It has uh, things that I really like about it, things I'm not sure I like about it, but I just need to use it. I haven't had a chance to uh, to get my hands on it. But Brad's usually right, so kill killer stove. Uh, right here, we have a peak solitude, teepee. I'm drawing a blank here. So I just throw this in this stuff sack. I don't like my uh, my teepees in tight, tight, small stuff sacks. but Peaks sells this in a pretty tight fitting stuff sack and it works. But when we get ice and it gets wet and it gets cold, I like a square kind of one like this. I like to just kind of fold it up, stuff it in there, zip it shut. I don't want to have to like cram it in there too bad. And when there's ice and it's kind of wet and all that, I like using an alternative bag, one that's plenty big enough, get it in there and I'm not cussing it. And we'll, we'll move every day sometimes and you'll have a little bit of ice and wet and moisture on your tent teepee. It's nice just to have a little oversized bag. That's why it's in this bag. This is a mountain ops stuff sack. Um, but you know, any kind of zipper sack is what I like. And this is the carbon fiber pole. So, but what you're getting is the solitude teepee. We've done a podcast on that as well. Lots of breakout episodes from that podcast. We've discussed it. So if you want to look at, into that, there's a link for that too. And you can check out that podcast episode. Okay. This is a tarp. I have a Z-Pax uh, Cuban fiber tarp. I bring that on my backcountry hunts. All my backcountry hunts have done so for five or six years. Tarps are indispensable. I just don't know how anybody could go out there and not have a tarp just to throw over your gear, hunker under. If it, if you had a tent failure, you'd still have a secondary option for shelter. Uh, a lot of times in mountain hunts, the, the rain comes in, hits you hard, and then goes away. And you can get soaked in 10 minutes, but it just passes. Well, you can throw on your rain gear and put a rain cover on your pack and sit there in the rain. But a lot of times, we like to just pitch up the shelter sit under it for 15, 20 minutes or an hour. Even if we're trying to get out of the sun or it's just an all day drizzle in Alaska hunting moose, we pitch this Z-Pax uh, tarp up, stake her all down and you're golden, good to go. So tarp comes with the uh, Gritty Stole Christmas giveaway. You're gonna get a pair of trekking poles from Peaks in the giveaway. Can't say enough about the Peaks tracking poles. They're the best. They are number one. They have a carbon fiber upper. They have an aluminum lower. This aluminum lower keeps from snapping like a lot of carbon fiber does. So you get the strength of aluminum down here. But on the upper, you get the benefit of the rigidity and the lightweight nature of carbon fiber. Um, very durable. You get that in the end, you end up with a very lightweight trekking pole. And this trekking pole is made for hunting. It isn't necessarily made for skiing or tr trekking or all the other stuff that other people use trekking poles for. You can, this, we wanted a tiny little basket that screws on like this, keeps your pole from sinking in the mud super deep and getting all nasty. And when your pole is going continually deep in this deep into the ground, it's a good way to snap it off for one or bend it. But also, um, yeah, you're like, you have to fight it to pull it out. You need, you absolutely need, need, need a basket. But we jokingly call these grass catchers. A lot of the baskets are just a much bigger size. So as you're hiking through brush, you're not in the snow. It's like your basket is catching constantly. You're not on a trail. You're not, you're off trail. You're not, you're not in the snow. You're, you're on a mountain. And so you need this stiff, stiff basket that about that big, it seems to be the perfect size and you're not having to fight with your trekking poles to get them through grass and brush. They don't get caught on anything, but then they do that job of stopping your pole from going too deep into the ground. It's the way to, it's just durable. And then in addition to that, we have, um, I like to throw these quick sticks on and turn my poles into some sort of gun rest. 
uh, you can use this for lots of different things. Um, I'll put my camera, my big lens in there and in a pinch, drop it in there and I'll be filming and it'll help stabilize my long lens, even though I don't have a tripod handy. And I use these constantly for so many things. We had, we're going to do a podcast just on all the uses for trekking poles, but these are an integral part to both the teepee. If you have it peaks outside, it creates a cross member across the top, which stiffens and adds rigidity to the top of the peaks solitude teepee. Also, I call it the rafters because I can hang all my stuff from this, from these poles, little hooks and hang my dry, my wet clothes and my boots and all sorts of stuff to the poles in the, in the peak of the teepee. But then these things also are indispensable for using to uh, put up your tarp. You need these for the tarp and uh, they'll hold up your tarp and then you stake it down. And um, yeah, they're just, they're just, they're just a necessity. Finally, I use this for skin and uh, game. So moose, elk, you're solo, or even if you're not, you, that animal is on its side and you've got to lift the leg up and skin around it. And this acts as like a jack. You put the animal's leg in it like this. And if it's an elk or a caribou, you only need to do one, one pole per leg. You stick that thing in the ground, cinch it down, put this one in and you jack up that leg and that leg will hang like this. And then you can skin around it pull the hide back all the way down the body and the legs are both, both legs are propped up, done it a million times. Now it is incredibly handy when it comes time to skin game, especially if you're solo. The other thing is if you are doing something like a moose, something very large and the leg is massive, well, th then you just use two. You put, you put the leg through like so. and. Uh, like this and you crisscross them like this and then the leg just hangs in between right here like this or you can put them on the top as well i've done the same but the leg typically hangs like this and you can jack it up to whatever height you want and that moose leg will go up in the air nobody has to hold it you don't have to try to hold it up you don't have it falling down and getting hair and mud on it it's just versatile man trekking poles if you use them right, they help you get up the mountain. They save you on your way down. Put on some micro spikes, couple that with a pair of good trekking poles. Much safer descent off a mountain. Um, never leave these behind. They are a shooting stick. There's just uh, so much use in a trekking pole. Can't, uh, can't say it enough. So this is the Peaks Elite Trekking Pole. I recommend those. Cork handle or the regular. I like the cork. I like how it feels. But I've used both for years. I think the other one's a little bit lighter, maybe. But I like I like this. Good on the hands. So there you have it. There's the trekking poles. And then we've got the Graxaw game bags. Been using these for years. You can put a whole elk, boned out elk in these things. You can do uh, deer, bear. They don't weigh anything. They're about the size of a pop can, like so. The material is super lightweight been using them for years they have a tremendous level of uh strength um they're puncture they're better they're more puncture resistant than they used to be um but they're really not meant for sharp objects so we usually debone meat but you know bear and deer we often throw that in as long as there's no super sharp edges these bags are unbreakable and we reuse them and reuse them and reuse them and uh they come what's nice is they hang really well there's no extra rope needed generally because these bags we'll get them up there like so we'll fill them up with our quarters and we we want it shaped like this so when it's full it's not like some gunny sack where all the meat is at the bottom it stays in a in a uniform shape like this then the meat stays vertical inside your bag and it distributes the weight up and down when you just have a big sack, an open sack, all the meat just goes to the bottom and then you have a hard time getting it to carry well in your pack, on your pack out. These are well designed for just the right amount. And then when you pull this string, you got quite a bit of string to work with. And we'll take this and we'll wrap it around limbs and cinch her down and hang it. And it will hold, I don't know, hundreds of pounds um, this way. So 
That's our uh, that's our game bags. Can't recommend them enough. Go to Graxaw. Get yourself a pair of these, set of these if you don't have them, and get yourself the boot dryers. He makes both. Um, Austin's a, a, a stud of a guy, so go to Graxaw, and uh, that's how you spell it. Right, right, right there. That's it, right there, Graxaw. So uh, go to the website there. Use our code over there, and, and, and you'll save some money. And it helps us out. Here are the Peaks Gators. You're going to get a pair of Peaks Gators as well. So you're going to get the teepee. You're going to get the Gators. You're going to get the poles if you win this giveaway. The Gritty Stole Christmas giveaway. Um, The Gators have been a killer product that has gained respect throughout the industry. As more and more people get their hands on them and use them, uh, they're universally uh, seen as a as a as a great product um it's one of those products that wasn't as sexy and it took a while for the word to get out and now that people have put them through pace paces and paces and paces i'd say uh, in my opinion they're the best gator out there bold statement but i think it's true this is my original pair i've had this pair for i'm going on two and a half years or something like that. Um, and I have beat the crap out of them and they just keep on, they just keep on working. So um, they just take a beating. They just do. And they're, they don't slide down like other brands do. The buckles don't collect ice and snow and, and crap at the bottom of your feet. These things don't wear out. These buckles are, are more durable than, the competing brands that were out there. So are the hooks. The, uh, the quick attach is super nice on these buckles here. You can, you can, um, y- once you feed the, the strap through here and it buckles, then you don't have to redo your setting. You just pop it on there and close it and you are, you're in. And then to take your gator off, you just push it and uh pops out this one is banged up but you get the gist you can always replace that clip too but this thing these are just good good money good good value this is the uh well this is a sleeping bag it's a peak sleeping bag and it will be in the giveaway as well so uh i like a good stuff sack um you can cinch this sucker down with this stuff sack, there's other ones out there. Get yourself a good, uh, Brad, which one do you use? I don't have enlightened. enlightened equipment. Yeah. You can just keep cranking that down, down, down. It's nice to have a good stuff sack for your sleeping bag because, um, they're so lofty and they can take up so much space, but you get a good stuff sack on them and they'll shrink down to this and you don't want to store them that way, but just for camping, just for your trip day after day, you can get it down to like a loaf of bread, stuff it in there and it'll save a lot of room on a future podcast. I'm going to go through all the ways that you can load your pack up, um, and, and how to efficiently carry your gear. Cause that is just something that a lot of guys haven't figured out. And it is a major game changer when it comes to the wear and tear on your body. You know, the efficiency of carrying your, your pack is, is a critical part of backcountry honey it can be you know your 60 pound pack can feel like 80 pounds or it can feel like uh 50 pounds when when you have it right like it can feel lighter than it really is or it can feel heavier than it really is depending on how you load the pack so we'll get into that on a future podcast okay the other thing in the giveaway is uh and one of my favorite items is this is the mountain ops battleground hoodie merino wool i have used I mean, I've used a ton of Merino products across the board from a lot of different brands and companies. I don't know what Mountain Ops, what, what their secret is, but the, the, the weight of this, and I don't remember which weight this is. This is 180. Yep. Okay. This thing is, um, it just performs. It feels better than everybody else's stuff. And I, I'm telling you, you have these, we're a wool company type brand. And I don't know what it is, man. I've got three or four of these and, um, they just are nice. Mountain Ops nailed it and has nailed it ever since. I can't recommend it enough. Get this thing and compare it to what you have already. 
And uh, I'll be surprised if you don't prefer it. So that's my plug. I mean, kind of shocking because they're not known to be an apparel company. I mean, they do the supplements and other things, but they nailed it with this battleground hoodie and the wool that they're using, this merino wool. Wicks moisture well, and I'm a sweater. It keeps me nice and warm. It's it's kind of that right, right material. Been using it for four or five years now. Um, next on the list, I think last on the list for, for our discussion today, this is the Kuyu Super Down uh um super down pant. Um it's uh the puffy pants. Everybody should have a pair of these. Th- these not necessarily the Kuyu, but the Kuyu, this is my first time owning these. I used them this year. Prior to that, I've been using um the black Ovis. These are the black Ovis puffy pants. You can see they've been through the war, you know, they're they're a little bit uh torn up and nasty this puffy pant is um i mean it's lasted me like good three three good solid years of heavy use i like to go when it comes to puffy pants go with xls just go big i mean it's just so nice to have all that extra room you only put them on for glassing typically you're not hiking in these things or what or covering big miles you might wear them around camp and outside or just for a little short walk somewhere but I like going big so they can go over whatever I'm wearing at any time. Um, when I sit down in glass, I don't feel like uh, they're too tight. Too tight a puffy pants loses its uh, efficiency. So I like these. I like these. Um, these are not going to win you any fashion contests, the Black Elvis. You look kind of fat and not not very sleek. Uh, whereas the Kuyus are very athletic fit. They look pretty sexy. But the Kuyus are like twice the cost, I think. Um, and I can't say that they're tremendously warmer. I will say that the outer material is, it does, it has seemed to be more durable. The baffles are sewn in the Kuyu instead of, instead of heat treated iron, like, uh, like, what do you call this? They call it welded, yeah. the welded seam. Um, the zippers have held up on, on, on the black Ovis pair. I think they're they're just half the price somewhere in that ballpark, but I will say that uh, the durability, the the zipper quality, the the way these fit and feel, the reinforcement of the knee, like this this right here, this material, it wicks more moisture away and it's thicker. The back is lighter, but where the knee is, it's pretty reinforced. Um, where the butt is, it's reinforced. I do like that. These pants seem built to last. They feel good. They look good. Um, you know, if I had the money, if, if money was no object, then I would get the Kuyu. Um, but if I'm on a budget, I wouldn't hesitate to get the Black Ovis. They, they're for the budget guy. They, they have done great. If you just need a pair of puff pants, don't want to break the bank, they're solid. But, uh, if you got some money, the Kuyu is better. It's just a little bit better, but you're paying for it. You're paying for it. Okay, so that's the uh, the the super down pant. Um, it's got some other features on it that are pretty nice. The pull string, things like that. Um, they zip from the top instead of from the bottom. There's some cool stuff about these pants. Really, really like them. Um, and uh, that's the super down pro. So that's the Kuyu uh, the Kuyu pant, and they come with this giveaway. And same thing right here. You have the super down pro. Um, puffy jacket. I love this thing. It's lightweight. It doesn't weigh jack. It's compact. It's warm and it's real durable. Um, it's not as lofty and bulky as other down jackets have been. I've owned most of what's available. Um, and other ones that are this thin aren't this warm. And other jackets that are twice as thick are about this warm. Kuyu's nailed it when it comes to the lightweight versus performance on their puffy puffy gear. I like this. I like how, the cut of it. I like the feel of it. Uh, I It's just a great jacket. Um, so can't recommend it enough. Uh, so that comes in the kit and uh, the Gritty Stole Christmas giveaway. So that's that's 
everything that uh, is up for grabs, if you want to go over to Peaks Equipment and get entered to win, every $10 gets you an entry. We're going to pick that winner on December 17th, just a couple days from now. So I hope you found the discussion useful. Check out the links below for uh, discounts on gear that we that we use, that we have partnerships with folks. You know, typically the way that this works is we use the gear we like. And if possible, we try to work out some sort of uh, uh, link or code so that we can pass the savings on to you and also we can get a kickback. We don't try to find who offers the best kickback and then squeeze the gear into our setup. We go the other way. We find the best gear we can find that we have tried and true and tested and then hope that we can work out an arrangement where we can make uh, an income off of sharing the information with you. So there's there's nothing that uh, is in this. You know, we're adding new stuff all the time. And thankfully, most companies want to work with us. So we get to choose what we use and we pick the best. Um. You know, some people will come on and they'll say, hey, what about, I think you're just selling out on this gear or that gear. And my my challenge is, well, you tell me what's better, kick it my way. And generally they offer something, some solution that's far inferior to what we're talking about. And I can pretty much dissect that in a few minutes. And uh, every now and then we learn about a new product and then we roll it into the lineup and it does replace what we already have. But the stuff is tried and true. We know it. We spend 100, 150 days in the field in tough, tough places. And uh, we know what works and what doesn't work. It's just, just, uh, just, just, this is a solid, solid set of equipment that you can't go wrong with. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, have a great Christmas season and good luck to one of you who might win this entire package at Peaks Equipment. Gritty Stole Christmas. Thanks for tuning in. Stay gritty.